Hello SGD, this video will be a compilation of a three part series I put out quite some time ago Magic Wands and the Ancient Sciences, so it's essentially looking at magic wands as they were used in the past, whether it was Hermes or Fof, and how wands and rods and the magic behind them is a symbol of power but more specifically a symbol of the authority to institute into law official weights and measures. Weights and measures is one of the keystones of any civilization, uh, trade, taxation, uh, laws regarding land, all uh, mar the marketplace, all aspects of society, uh, standardized official weights and measures are just so important, very unsexy topic, but vital importance. And uh, figures such as Fof or Hermes were gods of weights and measure, Shesat was the female equivalent of Fof, and these gods, whether it's Hermes slash Mercury, Fof, Shesat, were the gods of knowledge, the gods of science, architecture, but also accounting, and well, just science in general. And still now, as before, without standardized weights and measures, there is no science. It's the, the keystone of it. Uh, also, to this three-part series, there'll be a fourth part, again, of a much older video for uh, myth and morality of weights and measures. Now, for instance, in the Book of the Dead in ancient Egypt, the importance of weights and measures, it's essentially in the Book 25 of the Book of the Dead, they speak of the laws. Um, in, so in the Bible you have the Ten Commandments and it's I shall not kill. In the Book of the Dead it's the opposite direction, it is I have not killed. But both in the Bible and the Book of the Dead multiple references to the morality surrounding official weights and measures and um, many passages in the Bible, again Book of the Dead, Magna Carta, uh, US Constitution, these very important documents which are keystones of underlying our civilization but also the concept of weights and measures underlies the sciences and architecture, whether it's stone circles, pyramids, Parthenon, all the way up to the modern skyscrapers and even uh, to computing. Official weights and measures standards uh, just a foundation to all of this. And so ancient wands, the word wand translates to measuring stick and again, Fof, Hermes, uh, you name it, uh, even in Eastern tradition, uh, priests, kings carry a rod or a staff, and that was also a, 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 an official measure tool, if, you know, a measuring rod is a measuring wand. And so that will be this particular video, again, compilation of a free part of, of a release some time ago, and the fourth part is on the myth and morality of weights and measures as in described in ancient texts. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Well, in this video, I want to examine the history of magic wands, what they mean, where they come from, and how they have still uh, such a, a grasp on, well, fictions especially, and so Harry Potter being very famous um, in recent years and really brought forth again the, the power of the, the wand, the magic wand or the magic staff. However, this of course is a piece of fiction, but there is some very real history in regards to this and it's been uh, largely lost and, uh, well not really lost, but it's uh, especially amongst, let's call them the alternative community, uh, they've missing the point, missing the, the well-known history of the wand and connecting it, uh, um, joining it to what is contemporary fiction and, uh, and and connecting it to there. But there is quite a bit. So again, the magician's wand. And throughout this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, Fof and Hermes and these other gods and rulers from the past who so often connected with magic and but what is the magic that they are passing on what is the knowledge that they are passing on and how is it especially connected through the magician's wand and, and remember a magician is a trickster just like uh, the trickster god Hermes uh, someone who has a higher level of knowledge and is able to you know what is science to one and knowledge to one person becomes magic to another and so for instance the, the wizard staff or the, or the magician's wand is just a common theme throughout uh, you know, literature and folklore. However, again, there's a strong, deep connection to real history. Uh, Lord of the Rings, for instance, and the wizards. 
Uh, again, uh, recent years, especially this type of wand, the uh, magic wand connected to uh, sort of a Harry Potter series and, and this type of um, storytelling. And uh, for instance, in the Harry, the Elder Wand, which was this uh, the most powerful wand. But what and well, the the wand store and uh, with Ollivanders and uh, again this. But how? What's the origin of this? Well, throughout history, we will see these legends of the magic staff or the magic wand. And the famous one comes from Exodus, and where Moses uh, would challenge the Pharaoh and his magicians to do well uh, magic, and and they sort of there was a, a back and forth, and then uh, and very much in the way like magicians' tricks are still very uh, important and again how magicians je jealously keep their secrets but uh, for instance in the uh, story of Exodus Moses would challenge the Egyptian priests to a duel of magic and yeah there was a back and forth and so one worked out the other one's tricks and then repeated it and then yeah and but that's what one example of how still in the uh, in the history and the legends passed on that uh, the magic wand or the magic staff has been passed uh, carries on through. However, as I'm going to show, there is some very uh, solid meaning to to this. And again, it's one of those things where, you, how can I put this delicately, where uh, I want to, to put a certain level of uh, mysticism onto some things which are very scientific and, and about knowledge. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. But uh, Again, um, the wand of the hermetist or the magician or the wizard is a common theme carrying through history. And in esoteric uh, organizations such as Freemasons, the deacons carry the wand or the staff. And again, this has a very important meaning to stone masonry and construction from the, from the Great Pyramids through to the, uh, the cathedrals through to the modern uh, structures, major public buildings and cathedrals of this day. And it has a very symbolic meaning. So with all these things, there are multiple levels of, of meaning. And But of, to begin with, um, I'm not going to explain all of them because I personally, I don't understand all of them. However, however, there are some very important aspects in regards to wands and staffs that are generally uh, overlooked. And so we can, so for instance, uh, Freemasonry, the deacons with the wand. And even if you look at the symbols of Freemasonry, we have the square, the plum, uh, the compass, uh, scales. Again, these tools of construction, and even there we see the wand uh, from the, well, it's a direction of the sword. But all of these sim these are symbols of construction, but also connected to what will be called uh, magic as well. But you have to remember that. Uh, as Arthur C. Clarke put it, any technology significantly advanced will appear as if magic. And the construct, the people who built the great cathedrals, the pyramids, the temples of old, had a secret knowledge that was part, and that knowledge was very much based on weights and measures and geometry, and what we would, what we now call the modern sciences. However, what is a wand? What does it actually mean? Well, if the original uh, meaning of a wand is like a reed or a cane, but also a, a wand or a measuring rod. And that's one of the key points I'll be uh, discussing in this video, how the wand is actually a tool of measure and that uh, not in just a literal sense, but also in a symbolic and legal sense, this is a very important aspect in regards to this, which again is generally... Um, overlooked by uh, some in the alternative now. So w the wand has to do with the ancient science or magic of weights and measures. And for example, both Hermes or Mercury all carry the wand or the measuring tool. They were all gods of weights and measure. Both Hermes, Mercury, gods of magic, gods of weights and measure, gods of knowledge, gods of science. Uh, as we would call it now, but back, you know, this is a relatively mo modern uh, term, but the sciences goes back a long time, whether it's metallurgy, construction, stonework, um, glass making, dyes, uh, paint, uh, everything that we would sort of put under engineering, chemistry and physics w was uh, known at in ancient times and it was practiced in ancient times as seen through temples, 
uh, cathedrals the, or the pyramids and, and uh, road construction, again, metallurgy and all the sciences of chemistry, physics uh, that we uh, would call those today, but they were being practiced a long time ago. But, you know, it's quite literally the physical evidence is there in these great temples of old. And so the yardstick or a ruler, if you have a, you probably have one at home, you'll ca that is a magic rod. It's, that's a wand. And that's literally the term uh, of what it means. And you'll find that throughout history, uh, throughout all cultures, the importance of the wand or the rod or the measuring tool is at the heart of so well, all of this, whether it's construction, uh, chemistry, physics, uh, as that was expressed in older times. So magic ones, this will be the feature of this particular series. I'm going to split it up into uh, a few pieces because it will run for an hour as a, as a whole. But hope you enjoy this because it will be examining some features, uh, some parts, especially in regards to uh, ancient Sumer, Egypt, the, the Indus civilization, and uh, Greek, Greek, Roman, uh, Saxon, medieval period. And again, uh, weights and measures being one of the keys. Ancient science, weights and measures are the foundation of the modern sciences as they were before. It's about observation and measurement. So if we begin with the Egyptian god Thoth or Tote, uh, some other variations on the pronunciation, but there's some very important uh, information. Now some of it's out there and I want to present some uh, other information in regards to this and how it will connect uh, to Hermes and to uh, many other important gods across the ancient world. And we begin with uh, uh, Thoth as it's sometimes pronounced now. So we begin with this image and here we see uh, Toph or Foth uh, and deliver and well feeding the Ankh and this is there's some very important um, symbolism in regards to this but it has to do with most importantly weights and measures and or how these will connect and that's well we'll examine that in a moment. So we have Foth or or Tote or uh, some other Foth uh, sometimes pronounced as well, but I'm I'll be calling him Foth. And to begin with, so we have he's carrying two rods, and you notice that there are snakes uh, coiled around the rods. And we come to the top there, and we see these um, uh, the two uh, cobra heads, and they're wearing two different hats. Well, they're the different crowns. They're the crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt. So it was under King. Um, Nama or Mina sometimes called uh, and the um, Nama palette and he he said to have united the the upper and lower Egypt and that is usually regarded as the beginning of Egyptian civilization but I think there's some issues around that because it's a bit arbitrary because it's uh, well we do have a lower and an upper kingdom so there was an uh, and whether he reunified or unified it, it's a little bit out there, uh, a, a little bit up in the air, but uh, either way. So you very, you very often see the pharaohs wearing a crown, and you'll notice, but it's actually the crown of Lower and Upper Egypt put together. And here we see them delivering them uh, uh, with uh, Foth and the two rods. Now there's some very important information here, and we'll have a look at that. So to begin with, the angle of these uh to, of these rods is at a six degree separation. Now that's, uh, as other researchers have noticed, for instance at Luxor, what's often called the temple, so Karnak and Luxor and this temple of man, how there's an offset there, the angle doesn't remain consistent. And well it happens to be at six degrees and this carries on for like uh, city planning, especially in regards to the esoteric or what's called the occult as in hidden uh, in city plans such as Washington, Canberra, Brasilia, Astana, Versailles, and these other places, um, this six degrees, and especially connected to Freemasonry as well, it's it pops up so often. And some, and I'll have a look at that. Okay, before we go there, I'll have uh, okay just a few examples of six degrees. So uh, Canberra in Australia, which is Australia's version of Washington D.C., overloaded with city plan symbolism. Uh, the buildings themselves, all the same measures, all the same numbers, very hermetic, very occult. But it's 
six degrees from True North. So we have Northbourne Avenue, the main uh, road, the defining road entering Canberra, but it's six degrees from True North. I also pointed out in uh, in another video, I explained why the Washington Monument is not directly south as what most would expect. It's actually 377 feet off centre. But uh, um, again, this carries through. I've done I've done a few videos on that. It's uh, again one of these symbol, um, very important numerical measurement symbols that carries across the world, and that it well it creates a six degree angle so that's in it's in Washington as well uh, the axe de historic in Paris we have again this uh, for, so from the Louvre so you have the main axis where the Arc de Triomphe uh, so forth is and then it from the Louvre just uh, uh, the gardens at the Louvre just before it, it would begin there's a six degree offset um, again uh, for instance, Macquarie Street in Sydney, set up by the uh, Governor Lachlan Macquarie, conscientious Freemason, he, uh, the, the, the city plans, all that he did, uh, it's all um, very hermetic, and once again, it's six degrees off centre, and there's some important astronomical reasons to that, and I'll maybe cover that in the future, but if you, it's an area of research if you are interested. Now, he also set up uh, Liverpool. And again, Macquarie Street in Liverpool, just uh, down the road from me here. Uh, again, it's you'll see how it's not on True North, it's actually six degrees north. I didn't pick the right illustration, but it's, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, other people have also noted, noticed that, this, for instance, right from the centre to the top of the upper chamber of a King's Gallery is a six degree um, off centre as well. And there are plenty of other examples I, uh, I have of that, but just, just for the moment. And so if we go back to both and the six degrees, which is in uh, Karnak, um, but again, there's many, many other places in the modern and across the ancient world. And it's one of the first things, if you're into uh, researching this area, look at the temple orientation and look for six degrees. You'll find it so, so often. And there are some very, very good reasons for that. It's um, uh, Theosophists have pointed out that it's, uh, they call this the, the solar angle, but it's also six degrees is one sixtieth of the 360 degree circle so you have one sixtieth of a circle uh, uh especially like base 60 you know 60 minutes per day 60 minutes per seconds pops up in babylonian maths and very important uh, element to consider as well and another one so famously raising the jed and we have that it's tilted at this um specific angle as well you can see here's the crown of um so you have a, the same crown of uh, upper egypt and there and there we can see wearing again the crown of uh, lower Egypt as well. So you have this. But um, what's important about the raising of raising the jed is the angle. And if we now, I'd like to be more accurate, uh, but because you can see the line going across here, but the photo is not exactly level. So uh, if you there is um, when I was doing this, I noticed ever so slightly it was not on directly on center but if you take into account the angle of this photo well it actually does line up so the this particular rod or wand which, which is uh, held by uh, Foth is reflects the six degree uh, 23.4 degree tilt of the raising the jet why again is that important just like the six degrees having astronomical so if you want to line your city up to certain astronomical events six degrees is an important way to do it numerically six degrees um, the, the numbers it converts to all the angles again all this very hermetic harmonic Pythagorean knowledge but it also explains the tilt of the earth why we have the seasons so previous video I uploaded uh, I, I explained the ratio of the Great Pyramid to the size of the earth and how it's uh, 86,400 is is the, bet, uh, the better explanation for it for many many reasons for that um, which again it, it's suggesting that they had uh, as in geometry, earth measure knowledge. Well, this is another element of, uh, on top of well, the Great Pyramid, the astronomical alignments within the pyramid. It's just uh, to call it all coincidence and to miss it, dismiss it is, you know, you know, it's 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 a pathology. It's de it's a, a denial as a mental illness. Um, to to be frank, because these things don't happen by accident, and it's built into the architecture. It's built into the legends and the symbolism.
And well, again, just as we've at six degree offset, uh, the, the pyramid, the unfinished pyramid on the dollar bill, famous symbol, that also matches raising uh, the Jed at the tilt of the earth and therefore matches this depiction of uh, Foth. And lastly, the coiled snakes, well, I'll get to that in the next section when we have a look at Hermes slash Mercury and this snake symbolism and the rods, how it con connects to weights and measures and by that because who exactly what what is Foth what does he do well he's the moon god and so you'll see, often see depictions of him with a you know with a disc above his head the, uh, the moon disc but he was the gods of he was the god of uh, weights and measures because he was also the god of knowledge and also the god of magic and well magic is a loose term because uh, any any science or, or you know, or mag like the magician's trick. If you don't uh, understand it, it would look like magic, but it's actually done with some basic science. Now, for instance, in the uh, story of Exodus, and how uh, Moses uh, did battle with the priests of the Pharaoh, and they basically tried to outdo each other w with magic tricks. Uh, some very now sort of off topic. Um, if you're interested in, have a look into the. Um, Indian rope trick and oh, it's just amazing it was recently re-performed again and even the top uh, magicians uh, can only explain some elements of how they did this trick and that's but that's again that's just one of my things so uh, both um, God of knowledge God of weights and measures weights and measures what what are they that is science that that's the basic of, basis of science you, uh, science is about observation and measurement and and from there developing theories so knowledge is science weights and measures are the fundamental building block of all sciences uh, also here's a depiction so I've photoshopped this on but this is an Australian uh, white ibis sometimes also called a sacred ibis that's what um, the head of Foth depicts and this is the African sacred ibis. Now in Australia here we have the sister bird, so that's the African. While here in Australia we have the Australian white ibis, also sometimes called the uh, sacred ibis as well. So that's one of um, that, that's where the depiction. That's what uh, the, the bird head of Toph, uh, Foth is depicting. But it's also relevant because we're going to have a look at Hermes and the connection to birds and and gods of weights and measure. But that'll be in the next section. Foth, uh, the god of knowledge, uh, the god who delivered uh, the skill of writing, magic and weights and measures, well you can see he's reflected in many other cultures uh, across time and one example is Nuwa and Fuzi from China. They created the earth, but you can see uh, the intertwined uh, snakes but with the compass and straight edge, uh, a reference to well, the great architect and geometry which is another constant theme. But uh, so one thing that Nuwa and Fuzi did was they created humanity and then they also taught them uh, skills such as hunting, fishing, raising domesticated animals as well as riding. Very much in line with the uh, tradition of Foth being this uh, uh, a god who delivered knowledge um, and a god connected to geometry which is uh, geomo, you know, geo earth, metri measure, so weights and measures being a key theme repeated as well and we see how also Foth taught humanity the art of writing and a very similar theme with the snakes there as well. In uh, Suma, um, Ningusida we can see again so you see the again the intertwined snakes but you'll notice these two figures on either side carrying the rod which could also be called the wand and it's a measuring tool and will uh, show because there are many connections across many cultures uh, regarding weights and measures and the power of weights and measures it's it's a basis of law and trade amongst the oldest books of law is the concept of uh, honesty in weights and measures uh, one of the most the key powers that that a, that a king or a ruler as in a ruler literally has is that he defines what the weights and measures are of the kingdom which is essential for trade taxation uh, keeping peace as well because once you have a standard weight and measure it also stops arguments. It's you know, uh, it's it's a it's a peacemaking tool amongst many other things. 
and this is a theme we'll uh, look into more. So again, yeah, we see the measuring rod or the wand on either side. Uh, now, there, this is an Aztec sculpture. Some references say it's Quetzalcoatl, uh, which is a snake um, as well. But again, these intertwined uh, snakes appearing again. Some say it's a Aztec warrior. Some say it's Quetzalcoatl, but it just it's a, it is uh, I I haven't confirmed it, but maybe someone else will. Um, but again, this theme, like just like Quetzalcoatl in uh, South America, he brought knowledge. He he taught the people these skills. So very much in line with the same, whether it's uh, Foth, Nuar and Fuzi, Ningizida, and we'll see some other gods, important gods as well. So now we have, here we have Hermes, and there we see what's uh, sometimes called the Kundalini, but the Caduceus. Now it's not as apparent in this diagram, uh, but we do see the uh, snakes on the edge, and we'll explain those, but also the winged feet, which is um, an important theme. And also the more traditional um, uh, statue, or you know, you'll see of Mercury, which is the god of uh, a Roman name for Hermes. But now the the snakes is very clear. Again, the the winged feet, the winged cap, uh, the, because he's a patron god of travellers, and so you can see uh, Hermes is very often shown with his big, broad, uh, broad rimmed hat, uh, the traveller's hat, um, it's called. So that's one of the powers. Uh, now. Uh, in all the videos I do in regards to Hermetic architecture, um, well, Hermes or Mercury with the two snakes carrying the rod. Uh, also, the references to grain is another port and well time as well. But that's uh, and again, this is uh, Missouri State Capitol. Uh, same themes again, even the cornucopia once more. So that, that's another important one. There you can see the cornucopia. And Herb, I'll get to this. This is uh, Hermanubis. This is again the same. It's a fusion of Hermes and Anubis, and I'll get to that because uh, there's a lot of references, a lot of meaning in regards to here. And again, weights and measures, a god of science and knowledge, uh, but also uh, as Anubis is connected to the underworld, so is Foth. As we'll see, Hermes is also connected to the underworld. Another mosaic. Okay, so Mercurius or Hermes. Uh, he's on this chariot now. One of okay, he's also got this little tool in his hand. I'll explain that as well. One of the uh, special powers of Mercury or Hermes was that he could travel in between the land of the living and the land of the, of the dead, and that's another connection to both uh, Anubis and to uh, Foth and the Book of the Dead. But the Caduceus, this rod that he carries with the two snakes. Well, how did he get this rod? It goes back to so Hermes was a uh, trickster. He's what? Well, he's a uh, trickster god. And before I go, let's just have a look at some of the uh, the meanings of like who, uh, what is Hermes, what is Mercury. So Merc Hermes to the Greek, Mercury to the Roman. The winged feet are the traveler's hat, and the two snakes on the coil of the Caduceus. So Hermes or Mercury was a god of tricksters because he's very clever. Not because he's evil, because he's a trickster. He's not a, a, a in, an, in an evil way, but it's about again knowledge and being very smart. That's because he's uh, that's one of so just like Foth is a god of knowledge and magic. Well, what a magician is a trickster. Uh, he's also the god of commerce, and also the god of weights and measures. Just like Foth, he was connected to one of his key most important powers. One of the most important powers that a ruler or a pharaoh has is to define what weights and measures are. Therefore, taxation, land, trade, and all these uh, foundation stones of any civilization. He was also the patron god of travelers, and this is a reference again to weights and measures and secret knowledge. That that's the knowledge of navigation, which uh, is about astronomy as well, about understanding the stars, the way the sun and the moon um, move through the sky. And of course, the god of knowledge is uh, science. This is another like the sciences now. They had sciences back then, which included met like alchemy, but metallurgy. They were they were very skilled at making, uh, well, even paint, dyes, metallurgy, all, all these things were sciences. That's you know that's one of the the powers of it, and why they were so connected to it. So this idea of ancient science, uh, you've got to look at it as well. What what were they doing in trade, shipbuilding, all these skills, navigation are encompassed in knowledge, or what we would now call science. 
and the caduceus and the knowledge of the god of knowledge, the god of sciences. That's why uh, doctors um, still connected to it to this day. This is a symbol of knowledge. Okay, now back to. So, how did uh, Hermes get this caduceus? Well, to begin with, he ha he was Hermes the trickster, the trickster god, and as an infant, he snuck away from his. Uh, this shows him sleeping, but he snuck away from his crib. And he stole the cattle of his brother Apollo. Now this is a picture from Dalian City in China, and where you will find these Hermetic symbols, Hermes, Hermetic, is uh, interesting because you wouldn't think of it in China. But this is a statue in China. So the golden boy, the child stealing the ho uh, the cattle of Apollo, and and the different stories. But again, he flew away with them. Uh, the ability, the power of flight, was one of Hermes or uh, Mercury's powers and that's why he has the wings on his feet for instance. So Hermes snuck uh, away with the cattle, hid them and then he snuck back and tried to pretend it wasn't him. Apollo saw through this story and he knew it was Hermes, he blamed Hermes. Um, a part, one of the skills of Apollo is also his ability to see through lies. So for instance in the uh, one of the Corvus, the black bird, the servant bird of Apollo, he stole uh, he was ordered to go and fetch a cup of water for Apollo. He took his time, lingered around, then he blamed his lateness on the water snake and he come back. And that's why the constellations Hydra and Corvus are up there in the sky. That's like, again, uh, this theme, Apollo is a bit of a judge. Uh, the Delian problem begins with a plague because the people were judged and, and Apollo shot an arrow at them. So that's one of the connections with Apollo. He's also the god of music, and that's why he carries this lyre. And this is very important in reference to the Hermes story. So Hermes stole the cattle. Um, he couldn't get them back. Apollo told the story to their father Zeus, and Zeus laughed at the exploits of Hermes. This uh, didn't make Apollo happy. It was almost a war on Olympus. So he was enraged. It was nearly a battle, a war on Olympus. So what happened was that Hermes then gave Apollo a lyre made of a tortoiseshell. Here we see the, the lyre and a tortoiseshell. And why I have this picture, because these are both from the Archibald Fountain in Sydney, which is loaded with this Greek symbolism and these Greek stories. And so often in capital buildings, major fountains, major artworks, it's, it's loaded with hermetic knowledge. It's just, you know, it's literally telling a story. And as you move around, if you understand what the gods mean and what their places are and the symbols connected to them. Well, this tortoise, so there's no actual Hermes on this sculpture, but this um, tortoise uh, in, as part of a fountain, uh, you know, underneath Apollo here, again, it's a reference, uh, op secrets in plain sight, so to speak. So uh, Hermes um, gave Apollo the lyre, made a tortoiseshell, tortoiseshell uh, Apollo uh, music, and in appreciation Apollo was so grateful of this gift from Hermes that he gave him a wand made of an olive branch. And this is where the expression to an extend to extend an olive branch to someone comes from. It's a symbol of peace because with this exchange of gifts, there was peace on Olympus. And another important thing is that the word wand literally translating translates in Greek to measuring rod. Hermes is a god of weights and measures. The rod which he carries is literally a rod of for measure. And so there was peace between the brothers the, the, with the exchange of the, of the wand or the rod and the lyre uh, and peace was brought to Olympus. Now that, there's another reference to the um, an olive branch, but okay, before we go there. So, but however, this picture is a little bit, it's not deceptive, but not 100% uh, true. Okay, there's a bit of a typo scene that should be there. But however, the wand here, which is a caduceus, was not yet developed. So... Uh, Apollo just gave him a wand, a straight wand, wand, a measuring rod. What happened later was that as Hermes was traveling along, he saw two snakes fighting. These are black mumbas, but you could get uh, similar uh, cobras and other things. That, uh, some, this, you could also confuse it when the male and female get together, but this is actually two males fighting. This is uh, how. So Hermes saw these two snakes fighting. He put the rod between them, the wand, uh, separated them and brought peace. And that's how the caduceus come so now the caduceus is fully formed it's a measuring rod and this is it's also a symbol of peace it's another reference to the, well, the lyre and this one being a symbol of peace 
and this is so again this is why like this is a gpo uh, across sydney everywhere uh, this symbol will, will appear and this is what it means is it's it's a truly hermetic symbol it's a symbol of measurement but it's also a symbol uh, with deeper symbolism in regards to peace and measurement brings peace uh, uh, standard weights and measures trade uh you know um it's essential to peace and, and again and back to Fof, the two rods bringing the upper and lower kingdom together with the snakes combined well the upper and the lower kingdom uh presumably had because they are different kings defining different weights and measures so this is another uh symbolic reference to uh bringing peace together but also unifying under a stand like a, under one pharaoh who do, you know defines one set of law and one of the first laws any pharaoh or king has to bring is what is a f foot uh, to measure land, trade and all these things that go along with it. So as we saw the, the wand of Hermes as well as Valir and the story uh, surrounding uh, the, uh, the development of the caduceus has many connections to symbols of peace and so here we have an olive branch and I've picked it off so we have 13 leaves showing. Well there are many other interesting connections to this as a symbol of peace and a symbol of hope, hope. and one of them is well from the Ark of Utnapishtim uh, the, from the Epic of Gilgamesh uh, after the flood uh, described there in the Sumerian legend he released a dove, a columba, a raven and a swallow but uh, the dove was the a, a sign of peace that the flood had ended and that hope and peace had returned to the earth now that extends also to the constellation Columba and the, the constellations around it also tell something of a story regarding this because there are many navigation uh, and shipping symbols in there but again Columba who the dove brought back a branch uh, Noah or uh, Utnapishtim as in the much much older story from the Epic of Gilgamesh tells and we have a branch with these olive leaves and even the depictions will show if you like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, uh, maybe. But again, thirteen leaves on the um, olive branch is a very common symbol. And by that, also, well, if we come back to olive branch with thirteen leaves, where do we find that? Well, the UN flag for one. And again, this uh, 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 not the biggest fan of it, but let's uh, one of a. Uh, ideals behind it, one of the motivating um, uh, philosophy is this concept of peace and we see the 13 leaves but you'll also find that again I showed earlier the American dollar bill loaded with hermetic symbol um, symbolism including the acanthus for one but we also see the, the 13 arrows and the olive branch with the 13 leaves a symbol of peace uh, now this eagle is not exclusive to America even if you count the, there are 32 feathers and 33 and um, or 13 colonies but this uh, eagle symbol okay even the 13 stars there but uh, uh, one of the references because you'll find this eagle in other places and what we have is peace and we also have war with the arrows and this a uh, bit like the saying goes you know to uh, have peace you must be prepared for war and again this is you'll find this uh, the eagle symbol with the peace and the war uh, across many many um, other places as well so we have the olive branch uh, as peace but also weights and measures and that being important too So already as well introduced concept of where did the Caduceus come from, Hermes or Mercury, and the many connections to uh, Foth in Egypt. Not only the snakes with the rod, but also um, close that. Uh, well, the rod, but many other symbols, and so the gods of knowledge or of science, both of them um, and other sim similar uh, gods uh, across. Fuzi in 
ancient China, for instance, and they're also connected to gods of weights and measures. And weights and measures, so it, again, uh, you can't under, underestimate the importance of it because it has a lot to do with peace as well um, and stability in society. And, and again, it solves lots of, especially in a marketplace, uh, ancient societies are uh, still up to the Middle Ages. When you come to a marketplace, it would very often be uh, markers, um, for instance, at the cathedral or at the church or at the temple, which merchants could then use to gauge what measures were used in that particular market and that so that people wouldn't be cheated. Again, you're avoiding disputes. Um, and again, it's a, it's a sign of peace. And so we have weights and measures, again, might be... Uh, you know, not very dry, but this is what's underlying so much of this Hermetic, uh, ancient Egyptian, Sumerian, Greek, Roman, Chinese um, legends, and then fortunately, uh, a lot of it gets, um, uh, yeah, uh, into some really, uh, okay, I won't. So this is uh, the one of the uh, fountains here in um, Royal Botanical Gardens in Sydney, the Arthur Philip Fountain, and it has four figures around there depicting Greek gods and again telling a story. So many of these sculptures, uh, decorations on buildings actually tell a story. It's just a matter of understanding the mythology and, and showing, and well, there's a lot of information carried in these. Even the placement will very often depict something of a star chart, a constellational chart. But um, So we have uh, Lady Commerce. Now, Hermes is also connected, like as in Hermaphrodite. So Hermaphrodite was the child of Hermes and, Af and Aphrodite, and it was hermaphroditic. It was, uh, had a male and a female aspect, which again corresponds with as above, so below, uh, our chemical traditions of uh, polarity. So just like the eagle with the uh, arrows and the olive branch of peace, this yeah, concept of you know, the negative and the positive, but so, and very often you'll find Hermes uh, depicted again as a female form. But what is important is, so we have the caduceus, which is a wand, or, but a, a wand as in a, also the Greek word for wand translates to measuring rod. So this is a rod of measurement, but also in the hand there, and here we can see it, uh, very often this fi these figures will, will, more often than not, will carry something in their other hand. And that's a representation of weights. Now you could also, this one particularly because it's a straight edge, it has other aspects to it, but it's not always like that, but it always is a reference to uh, weights. So we have measures and we have weights. And for instance, yeah, weights and measure, again, it's one of these constant themes um, and, and means so much. And, and it's in, as in regards to well, modern science or ancient science, weights and measures observation, it's just uh, the cornerstone of it. But anyway, uh, I mentioned earlier Hermanubis, as in Hermes and Anubis connected together. And again, so this Herman, Hermanubis, what's he carrying? He's carrying a weight and he's carrying the measuring rod. Science, ancient science, just like t uh, today. And uh, a lot of the physics and the advanced sciences, maths that we have now were developed in a period when there was no computers around uh, and the tools were very simple. And... So, for instance, just think back to maybe the you know early 1900s. They were able they were able to define um, and investigate and bring forth so you know a lot of the, the the basis of our modern technology was built on the sciences developed with some very simple tools. And well, you know, and for instance, so um, just look at maybe you know. Pardon me, my cat ripped the microphone off my head yeah so uh, in you know pre-world war one and uh, and the, the the rapid development of technology that come after that uh, before flight and and all those types of things these were you know, yeah, it, was, it was all out there so you, you don't need fancy machines and and this explanation in regards to that because again in the earlier videos I've also shown how a lot to do with Baalbek and the pyramids and and people saying you can't cut this stone, you can't cut, you can't lift this stone. Again, people are make you know, supposed researchers are saying these things, and they haven't even done preliminary uh, looking into how the stonemasons uh, do these things. Well, yeah, again, you know, um, I know, yeah. So, 
Herman Anubis, he's a fusion of Hermes and Anubis. Hermes, the god of weights and measures, or Mercury as he's known in the Romans, and Anubis has to do a lot to do with the underworld, and we have a fusion there of the two. And so the, in the uh, Greek and Roman period, we have Herman Anubis fused together. And there is a very good reason for that, because it's also a fusion of Foth and Anubis. And so if you look at the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and so it has, the, you know, Anubis, he leads the soul to have his heart weighed against the feather. Another reference to weights and measurement and Anubis. Foth tallies it up, and again, he's measuring these lies, and then the person, who, if he passes a test, is led by Horus to Osiris in the underworld. Now, earlier I mentioned the twin, the the crowns of Upper and Lower Egypt, and there you can see there like another reference to that. That's what. But how does why is Fo, so? Not only was Foth the god of weights and measures, and why is he connected to Hermes? Because Hermes is, of course, the god of weights and measures. But Hermes was also the only god who could travel back and forth between the underworld on this particular chariot. And again, he's got carrying the wand or the measuring rod and the weight as well. Uh, ancient science, weights and measures. And so there is the direct connection now. For instance, okay, the Book of the Dead, Spell 125, it's pretty much the Ten Commandments from the Bible, but one of, I have not reduced the measuring vessel, I have not reduced the measuring cord, I have not encroached on the fields, I have not added to the pan of the scales, I have not tampered, tampered with the plumb bob of the scales, I have not taken milk from the mouth of babes. These are, again, truth in, in your weights and measures about a stable, just society, L law, trade, taxation, uh, land, um, this, you know, how, who gets this, you know, if you've got a field, you don't want people moving the fence over. So these are all based in the ancient legends and connections. And it all, again, has to do with weights and measures and ancient sciences. And we'll get with some very simple tools, but this is the basis of, of society and uh, foundation. Of a foundation of yeah, science and society, law and justice, the quadrivium, the trivium. All these things are in here. And, and there are some very beautifully simple, simple explanations to a lot of these things. And again, there's, uh, um, we, there, there's a certain focus on, on aspects of it which don't include this. And by not including this and not telling uh, the full story, and they're also, yeah, you, you, you have to understand these things and research these things if you are to be, uh, to, to have the full story, to, you know, to, to be uh, genuine. When you talk, yeah, so, okay, that's another uh, part of it there. So apart from Egypt and then the later Greco-Roman period, well, contemporary to Egypt uh, and the, the uh, Old Kingdom, we have the uh, Sumerian legends, and I mentioned earlier, Nigish Sida and the coiled snakes and the measuring rod or the wand, as is depicted. However, that's not the only aspect, there's many to it. Now, it's also worth, that. so this is a measuring cup. Now, even measuring cups, like, uh, well, a drinking cup was also a measuring cup, this uh, might be familiar with a phrase, your cup runneth over. Well, um, as, a, as a way of defining weights, a cup would be used and filled with water, and the water would uh, you know, be a defined weight, and so this also carries through um, in many aspects in across many cultures as well. So we have uh, not only representation of length, but also a representation of weight, because that amount of water would be uh, used as a standard. Um, Shamash, the sun god, uh, in, like a uh, Sumerian Babylonian, is even wearing the turban, which is and the star of Inanna. Um, this symbol later, uh, used later, we'll have a look, but uh, for, he's carrying with a rod and a coiled section of rope. This is a symbol of of weights and measures again, of standard, you know, of law and of standards, and about you know obeying the king's law and by them being the ones who define these things again for peace uh you know peaceful negotiations in trade taxation land disputes and all of that very important um code of hammurabi which is uh, one of the earliest uh, codes written down of law 
and again uh, describing how much compensation must be paid, how much wages must be paid to craftsmen and so well he's carrying the rod and the coiled rope again and Ishtar, oh, Ishtar is probably a better pronunciation she has the same thing and also you know they're both wearing this turban which is an important feature but again what are the, the law and these symbols now okay well uh, another important re reference is the so this is one of the oldest depictions of Inanna and uh, okay so this is so she's still carrying these little uh, objects but um, in Anna's descent into the underworld, a very famous ancient poem from this period, uh, to pass into the underworld, uh, she wanted to take control of the underworld from her sister, and to get there she had to pass through seven gates, and each time she passed through a gate she had to lose a piece of jewellery, lose a piece of clothing, and this seven-step ritual is also important in um, Isis cults, uh, Mithraism, uh, really all across so many of these uh, esoteric groups still even uh, now it's a very common theme for the seven steps of initiation but of the objects she had to leave behind uh, for instance she had uh, lapis lazuli uh, lazuli uh, jewelry but she also carried a measuring rod of lapis lapis lazuli and that was the first thing she had to to leave uh, behind which was interesting because a measuring rod being a symbol of truth and peace she was engaged uh, in a, uh, her campaign was to take over the underworld and she did that unlawfully, she overthrew her sister and then eventually uh, she was judged by um, Enlil and the Anunnaki were the forces, uh, the, you know, the stormtroopers so to speak who threw her off the crown and again truth and measurement and, and about stories of morality and behaviour connected two weights and measures and I'll put a link in the description to another video I've done on a very similar topic all about the morality and mythology of weights and measures because I'll go into some more details in regards to that. So it'll be worth uh, having a, also a look at Gilgamesh and especially the Sumerians and their connections to the importance of weights and measures in their legends and how it also connects to uh, biblical legends of uh, and, and stories and laws of weights and measures which again uh, have references also to uh, Egypt, of course. Now, if we go to... First, like, we begin with the Epic of Gilgamesh, Tablet 11, and the Preserver of Life, or the Ark of Utnapishtim. So in the um, Epic of Gilgamesh, he goes to visit his ancestor, Utnapishtim, who tells him the story of the Great Flood. And they describe the, the Ark, or the Preserver of Life, as being... 10 times 12 cubits in height, equal um, height and width, so 120 by 120 cubits. It also specifies the amount of uh, bitumen pitch um, uh, oil and uh, how much, well, interestingly, uh, 10,800, uh, 7,200. Again, the same very important numbers in regards to weights and measures and symbolism and the quadrivium especially but uh, just a second uh, an added reference so it's not just about length it's also these are descriptions of measures of volume or um, measures of weight in that way so weights and measures Inanna's descent into the underworld again connected um, Inanna and Gilgamesh and these um, legends and in her descent into the underworld she had to pass through seven gates now the uh, the measuring rod of lapis uh, lazuli, lazuli was um, the first thing that she had to leave behind and she was going on a quest which was not, ultimately she got judged poorly for it. So it's also an interesting point that weights and measures being so linked to truth, morality um, and, imp and law that the, in, in order to begin her quest the first thing she had to desert was the measuring rod. and um, but so again, if we come now, the Bible, so many references to the Bible, but uh, just focusing on uh, like um, Zechariah 2.1, and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand. Uh, Revelation uh, uh, 11, and again, uh, measuring rod like a staff, I was told to rise, uh, do not measure the court outside the temple. Again, 42 months, and... 
the two witnesses a prophecy of twenty of one thousand two hundred and sixty days. Very important number as well. That for instance, uh, two hundred and fifty-two degrees on the outside of a um, pentagon, and multiply that by the five outside corners, you get twelve sixty. And some other references, but that's going off topic a bit. Um, Ezekiel uh, measuring the t again measuring the temple area again uh, measuring reed and so the rod or the reed and also the importance like a, a reed was also for instance a papyrus would be uh, reed would be cut and that would be used like a, like a quill pen and that matches a description of Foth in the book of the dead uh, he watches Anubis wave a soul and then with a reed he writes on a on a tablet and he decides who goes um, accounts whether your life has been truthful or not and whether you can pass through to the Osiris and the underworld. Uh, Ezekiel uh, 43 again we see a uh, measuring reed or, or a rod measured again and this is a wand again so the focus the uh, premise of this has been the idea of the magic wand or the reed or the, or the rod. Um, Jeremiah uh, again uh, measuring line so and especially the connection in both in the Book of the Dead and in uh, like uh, subtle references to it in the um, in Anna's descent into the underworld and and literal descriptions of it. You shall do no wrong in judgment in measures of length or weight or quantity. You shall have just balances, just weights. Uh, again, you, you could virtually read that straight out of the Book of the Dead. And we brought you out of the land of Egypt as well. So. Very strong connections uh, there, and again, not too subtle. Um, Proverbs, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So, uh, not just for the, for the sciences, but also for the stability of law and trade and society. Again, the, the concept of being honest with your weights and measures. Also, the terminology that, you know, um, to... Uh, wavy evidence for rule of law, ruler as in the ruler of a kingdom or the ruler of measure, on the level. All these terms are very uh, have been built into our language. We still carry them today. Proverbs twenty ten: uh, diverse weights and diverse measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. Um, Deuteronomy. You shall, ha you shall not have in your bag two kinds of weights, a large and a small. You shall not have in your house two kinds of measures, a large and a small. A full and a just weight you shall have, a full and just measure you shall have. And again, our reference being uh, those who act dishonestly. And uh, again, no two subtle references to there. Uh, Revelation 22, describing the holy city, New Jerusalem. Again, um, uh, measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and walls, and 12,000 stadia, high, wide, and long. Which brings us... So, for instance, Moses, the book of law, uh, the, and Moses carried the staff. And again, how we mentioned earlier, uh, he used that staff uh, in his contests with the Egyptian priests. And this is the uh, picture from St. Andrew's Cathedral. You won't always see it, but in the story itself, he's carrying the measuring rod or a yardstick. Or, or a wand. And again, so uh, the Egyptian magicians and the, the concept of... Uh, so even now priests will carry the rod. So you'll see um, the shepherd staff, but you'll see all sorts of priests, even in uh, Shinto and so over in the east, all the way over, and it's still being like a rod of power or of law. And again, weights and measures, this being sort of, you know, like a tool of, you know, we have the... Uh, authority to to define what 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 measures are. This you will be judged on these measures if you're in not um, honest with them. But uh, interesting also. So Revelation 22. This is from now. Some versions of the Bible say 12,000 stadia. The city was measured with the rod. 12,000 by 12,000 by 12,000 stadia. The King James version says it's furlongs, and um, there's a whole history there. So the furlong. We can trace back to the uh, when it was officially become uh, law in modern terms was at the time of Elizabeth I and Edmund Gunter or the surveyor's chain of 66 feet. Ten of those is a furlong, 660 feet being one furlong in the modern speak. But in regards to, so 12,000 by 12,000, so the temple of Solomon, um, 
120 cubits high and back to the Epic of Gilgamesh 120 cu cubits high. So these legends which have all these other aspects to it are also conveying a certain level of information in regards to uh, weights and, and measures and sort of the, the focus of all the videos and why it's so important that these ancient stories and ancient lore is connected to ancient temples and so whether it's um, Stonehenge or the Pyramid or uh, the, the temples of, of uh, Sumer and Babylon or even um, over to the uh, Indus Valley Civilization who had a standard street width for instance of 33 feet uh, which again I'll, I'll get into that because that connects very strongly to another form of wand which was used in the medieval period. Another interesting connection from that area of the Tigris Euphrates uh, all and extending up over in towards uh, Persia is this depiction of um, King Darius so is with the measuring rod and the lotus and so the same very sim similar symbolism in regards to Hermes and these other gods who have the, the weight and the measure very much in the vein of the scepter and the orb which is still the uh, traditional symbol where we see kings and queens now but the interesting part is that the lotus uh, very closely reflects with this depiction of Foth where we see um, the upper and the, the, the two rods with the snakes and the crown of Upper and Lower Egypt and again we see the uh, lotus emerging from there as well as the uh, large lotus um, with the jars there on the side but that's uh, another interesting point the same thing can be seen here with this uh, famous uh, statue of Zeus. It's a reconstruction, but again we see with the scepter and the orb, the weight and the measure, and uh, a common theme that you'll see connected. So standing above the orb will be this uh, figure, um, angel type sort of figure. But again, uh, crossing cultures, crossing time, and it's um, weights and measures again being the 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 king of the gods or the king of the, the people being the one who holds these symbols of power and symbols of power as in law, trade and peace and one of the main ways to get peace is to have standard laws. Just like the Code of Hammurabi was famous because it instituted a set of laws which made well peace and law because everyone knew what the law was and, and we were, you're able to avoid a lot of arguments this way so it's another one of the powers behind this symbolism and this ancient science and so we have the Sumerian weights that came back to uh, Foth, the snakes, measuring rods but uh, while we're on that, uh, those symbols what we have is um, so uh, some r again carrying through to later periods is again the scepter and the orb the weight and the measure now that's uh, in Christian symbolism again carrying through and that's throughout the Bible many references to honesty and weights and measures are a very important part of um, keeping a stable society but also in ritual so lots of examples are of that but uh, what's most relevant about it is that it's still a very important theme today so royalty carries a scepter and orb and royalty defines of an you know, Magna Carta and all these similar documents just like the much earlier code of Hammurabi about setting weights and measures uh, and standards so that again as a uh, as a thing of justice but also as a thing of peace because once you have these just like having a common language standard common weights and measures fundamental in um, culture and society now uh, again there's lots of examples of um, of that and for you know kings and queens the same thing scepter and orb but it also connects as all the constellations many constellations who have references to the importance of weights and measures and Virgo for one carrying the rod and also the sheaf of wheat now wheat and grains is used to define weights and measures so free barley grain was one inch but also the amount of grains uh, for instance um, it's not talked about much anymore but when they talk about uh, how much gunpowder will go into bullets and stuff they talk about grains as well and that's been one of the standards throughout uh, history and there are many other uh, well Libra being one of the most obvious uh, pan scales but also the position of uh, Libra in regards to so Virgo the rod the sheaf of wheat 
directly above Libra. And here we have uh, Sextans and Hydra and Corvus, but Noctua should be here. That's no longer an official constellation. But there are Horologium and all these, there are so many references in the uh, constellations to, well, navigation, weights and measures and, and all these um, aspects. The importance of weights and measures, how they connect through, through trade, through uh, dealings in land, taxation, uh, even how, well, coins, especially like not so much now because we have uh, fake money, even our coins are not the value of the precious metals that they once were. But they're integral to our society, but th that still carries through with us through with us now because, for instance, the uh, picture of the Lady of Justice carrying the scales and the ruler, and even well, this older um, ad for the Fairbanks um, uh, standard scales and you know people who make or scales who make rules very important in, whether it's in engineering education so many uh, parts of our lives but even the terminology is carried on and and the phrase the, the phrases of you know, uh, grown into our language to have become very powerful so for instance well a ruler of a kingdom as well a ruler as in a, a measure of length but um, the rule of law being one example, and so it's usually with a sword, but this is also uh, a depiction of, you know, a bit stylized, but of a ruler. So we have the rule of law, the scales of justice, terms such as weighing the evidence, or a square deal, or even on the level. So these are all symbols about uh, terms, about honesty, about justice, about fair deals, and, uh, and essentially about peace and a stable society through a system of laws and standard weights and measures and so these are just some of the aspects that make this particular area so important still with us today but all of these uh, areas all, all of these laws all of these terms and and their application was just as vital in the ancient times because they, they you know how what are the foundation stones of a civilization and it has to do with language law standard weights and measures, uh, fair dealings in trade, and these uh, types of things are just integral to any society. And as just as it's as is important to us now, it was just as important back in the day. And so I'll, with that, I'll leave you. This will be the end of this part, and um, uh, there'll be one more to come, and I'll be looking at uh, not just the symbols and the, uh, the gods of weights and measures, but how it actually applies and and how the official date in regards to trade between uh, Egypt and, and the Indus uh, Valley civilization especially is much older than what um, official history will recognize and that can be literally weighed and measured through the systems of weights and measure that they use then and whether you, and most people wouldn't realize we're actually still using it today and so uh, with that I hope you enjoyed this part and have a good one. <laughs>
and he's able to well trick people just like Hermes is a uh, uh, trickster god and so from foe through to Hermes also called Mercury they're the famously gods of weights and measures they're carrying the wand or the rod uh, uh, Foth being part bird and we see Hermes has the same ability the ability to fly uh, again a bird hybrid and a bringer of knowledge both of them are gods of weights and measures and weights and measures is extremely important in this because when I end this particular series I'm going to follow on because I've been talking about the symbolism the history of it which connects all these multiple ancient cultures but next I'm going to provide some uh, very important information into how these ancient cultures are actually connected not just through the symbols but by measurably their, their units of measure harmonized together at very important points and in temples such as the Great Pyramid we can find uh, empirical evidence of that and so a yardstick uh, it's even a you know a yardstick is a term to you know an expression of truth and it's also a wand and okay, I'm freezing up here but uh, so we have again uh, both the wand the rods the bringing together of the upper and lower kingdom with separate units of measure bringing them together into the unified kingdom and of course so uh, m lots of other information in this particular drawing um, which connects to uh, some um, other published info but here's more of it uh, the moon god weights and measures god of knowledge god of magic god of writing the same theme so the Sumerian so what uh, after I finish this series I'm going to provide some very important evidence which connects the Sumerian uh, ancient Sumerians the Indus and the Egyptian uh, together which also will eventually link to some other um, such as a me uh, megalithic yard and connecting them but Inanna famously descent into the underworld the measuring rod of lapis lazuli uh, the, yeah so um, again the Sumerian legends has the same uh, intertwined snakes and the figure with the measuring rod or the wand uh, this is another symbol of measure uh, with the rod and a coiled rope so a measuring rod or a measuring line this is again Sumerian the um, Sun God Code of Hammurabi one of the oldest books of law or, or it's full with in, uh, laws but laws around weights and measure uh, magic ones measures being important to trade taxation of uh, your whole economy but also ancient metallurgy for instance um, uh, Elam glass back there's even a tablet which describes a, a process to create grass, uh, glass going back to this period so alchemy or chemistry um, this is all uh, connected to it um, across cultures uh, uh, especially connected with geometry as well geo you know geometry being earth measure the twin coiled snakes connections to writing the same gods the same themes um, the same knowledge and uh, and so in a symbolic sense we can see this uh, we, in the sense of law we can see this the legends um, are full of this uh, just going through as a quick review for uh, uh, music again being connected to measure and measurement to Hermes and Hermes and Apollo and that whole story and so these symbols the olive branch again so uh, these terms which we connect which are connected to measure so like on the level a yardstick um, extend an olive branch these are all connected to the wand or the measuring rod and weights and measures and which is very important to a peaceful stable society uh, so we see the development of Hermes uh, connections with uh, Hermes to the Greeks Mercury to the Romans uh, we'd be more familiar with this symbol but it's the same uh, wings on the feet travelers hat and the caduceus for measuring rod with the twin snakes and so God of tricksters commerce weights and measure and travelers as in navigation as well uh, commerce and traveling navigation knowledge weights and measures measures these things are all connected through law the symbols still carry uh, with us so the olive branch and the symbolism of the dollar bill but also the silver coin I will show how that also extends back to Old Kingdom Egypt and um, the Indus civilization and how various weights and measures harmonize and sometimes depicted with well again uh, weights and measures and we see the the lotus and this uh, ank like um, oh geez what's the name of that flower but uh, again so Darius with the measuring rod and the lotus 
both with the two with the upper and lower kingdom with the separate measuring rods but bringing them together bringing the weights and measures together uh, commerce again so this symbol will extend into this is uh, Sydney here and how weights and measure symbols such as carrying the weight and the measuring rod how that also um, extends to Mercury and the journey into the underworld just like uh, Foth and Anubis because Herm Anubis being a, a later fusion of Hermes and Anubis which is a fusion of um, Foth and Anubis and even the connections to the journey into the underworld uh, are, are all there the uh, books of law going you know back so the book of the dead um, keeping honest weights and measures the importance of this in a you know keeping a stable society gods of knowledge gods of measurement uh, also transitioning from Egypt into uh, the Old Testament and the Torah and Moses who carried the book of law and also uh, the staff or the wand and this has to do with measuring throughout the Bible uh, so many uh, references to it again keeping honest measures keeping honest weights now uh, what I haven't mentioned is so we have that the Kadu now the uh, Kakara or uh, Shajuku uh, Shaku Ujo, sorry, used by pilgrims. So in the Buddhist tradition of priests and monks carrying this wand, and the uh, not so subtle connections. Now, even in the Chinese monastery, the head monk uses this as a symbol of his authority. He just like kings and queens carry the scepter and orb to show their authority to define weights and measures. We see very much the same thing happening here, and this also later become a weapon used by the Shaolin, and that's. An important reference because um, the journey to the west, Sun Wukong, all throughout Asian literature, there are some very important numbers. You might recognise this if you're old enough. The show Monkey Magic, which is about journey to the west, Sun Wukong, and well, he could, amongst other, well, he could jump 108,000 li in a single somersault and 72 transformations. These being the same numbers in the uh, described in the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, for instance, Foth won 72 days. For the for the moon, 108 being a symbol, uh, a measurement you'll also find in the Great Pyramid and many other places. 108 feet also um, appears more than what coincidence would allow for. But in regards to the Shaolin, so 36 movements, 72 movements, these are all the same numbers across time, cross cultures. Epic of Gilgamesh, um, and how these units of measure all all come together, and it's just uh, evidence of. Uh, of a, of a single origin to our society, our civilizations that joins Egypt, Sumer and the Indus as well as other places going back way before the, the official history will count but using weights and measures I'm going to show this and that will be in the next series but the Magna Carta is famous because it's sort of a birth of modern democracy and one of the main themes in the Magna Carta was um, that the king was forced by the nobles to define what weights and measures were and what taxes were and again to bring about a stable society. Uh, Long Man of Wilmington. So this is often said to be uh, very ancient and however there is some evidence to say it probably extended from the 1500s because of instabil instability in the hillsides. So maybe it was an older reconstruction but just like uh, based on description so imagine the Druid priests, all priests carry this rod or a wand um, and and this is important because around this period they were still using what's called the Drusian or the Saxon foot which is exactly the same foot as used by the Sumerians and the Indus and again I'll show how these units of measure connect through time through the pendulum to Egypt and also how they are using the same weight and I'll go into because that same number of that weight is also built into the pyramid and all these older temples cross time cross cultures across the world so we enter like the Elizabethan period and then John Dee, uh, Enochian magic famous, what's he carrying? Uh, witches and, and wizards and magicians carry the wand and it's a measuring tool. And I'll put a link in the description to the history of a hermetic because in this I discuss this Francis Drake, John Dee and Edmund Gunther and the hermetic period where a lot of our modern imperial measurements were written down formally and from that uh, we developed the modern sciences. However, has these were all emerged from these earlier ones, these earlier measuring rods and these earlier weights. So this is just, a, they did not invent this, it's a continuation of ancient, of very, very ancient knowledge. 
Edmund Guntov, as an example, astronomer, mathematician, uh, he's into his geometry, and he um, f wrote down about the cross staff. And what's the cross staff? It's a way of measuring the height, it's a way of measuring distance, land distance, and it's also a way of measuring astronomical um, observations. And well, uh, he he, def he uh, it should be one hundred one yard long, and the the yard by or well, three feet or one hundred and eight grains. He also um, come up with some early trig and uh, the Gunter's chain, which defines measurements all over the, like the surveyor's chain, is the Gunter's chain, 66 feet, and that again, 66 feet is twice the average street uh, street width of Mahenjadaro, for instance, and that connects directly to this ancient, very very ancient unit of measure, and so we have how these ancient units of measure later uh, formally become our the basis of our modern science, which led to the uh, industrial revolution and the um, scientific revolution of recent centuries, all from uh, Gunther, who got it all from older ancient times. This can be measured, it can be tested, even the compass and the protractor, 360 degrees. Uh, there's an argument when it developed, but with absolute certainty, we know it, become, uh, it was written down formally, 360 degrees, each degree 60 minutes, each minute 60 seconds. So, and uh, even like 108 grains, but again, um, then later, uh, Freemasonry developed from stonemasonry and the craft guilds. They built the cathedrals. Uh, they built all, all these things, and the wand is a direct connection to the measuring tool, just like the compass and the square and the geometry was essential in this development. Um, now, most priests will carry a shepherd's crook, but we see here, so the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox and others still literally carry the caduceus of, of Hermes. This is a symbol of authority. And just like Mercury Hermes, this is a unit uh, measuring rod, uh, a symbol of peace as well. Uh, and even the terms like the rule of law, a ruler of a kingdom, a ruler to measure, scales of justice, weighing the evidence, a square deal on the level. These are all been from ancient times still in our uh, terminology. And the ancient Sumerians, the, uh, the Egyptians, Old Kingdom, and the... Let's tell Brack, but uh, what I want, uh, but uh, Harappa, the uh, Indus civilization, according to official history, just all developed at the same time, uh, that they were not connected. However, they're using the same weights and measures. You can just blow this out of the water measurably. The measuring rod, the measuring wand, and I'll show this in the next uh, series because instead of just the symbols, I'm going to be using the literal measures to show that these are connected. And one of just one of the examples we can use is the Great Pyramid of Giza. So I hope you enjoyed this series. It was just an introduction because the next I'm going to go into the numbers and the measures and show some that things. It's just it's it's recorded in the official books, but it just the, the connections haven't been brought together. And uh, there are other people who've investigated and they've basically had their academic career ruined by it. But we can we can weigh and measure these things, and we can draw lines together and show that uh, unless you believe in coincidence in a sort of religious way that it's all a coincidence, we'll know we can bring these things together. So, with that, hope you enjoyed. There's a lot more to come in the next series. It'll all be connected back to this one. Cheers. Hello. Uh, this video, I want to have a look at weights and measures. It's something that I keep you know banging on about, but I think it's very important. So, not just in the architecture and so many other. Uh, aspects, but also in society, the importance of it. Now, uh, for instance, consider our modern world and global trade. Standard weights and measures are vital. So, from shipping containers to uh, to cans to food to everything we do, uh, you know, the price of gold is measured on the troy ounce. So, we have these standard weights and standard measures that define. Uh, our, our whole society, our whole existence, and so it's not just the ruler or the scale, but it will also includes time. So, for instance, uh, will the clock 24 hours, uh, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds, but um, and that goes on to even so GPS and the 360 degree compass and how that applies to navigation and so there's not an aspect of our life of our modern life including on the digital world which uh, w weights and measures in some sort or another isn't 
uh, isn't being applied. It's a, it's an essential. It's a constant. Uh, the, um, it's, it's so omnipresent. It's, it's, it's there so often that we uh, almost have lost the meaning of it, the, the importance of it. It's become something r rather dry. We, you know, we overlook it. But uh, again, so the, the importance of it cannot be underestimated in the modern world. But we need to go back. And as we move back, so well, the modern trade system, and but people have been trading for a long time, and the importance of standard weights and measures, especially amongst merchants, but uh, even well, uh, the beginning of well, the railway, for instance, in England was an important turning point because it was, uh, and uh, in the modern world, was a sort of a reintroduction to more of a, a global standard of time zones as well as you know, the gauges of uh, trains and engineering companies building those types of things. But going back even further and further to ship makers, it's, it's everywhere. It's, you, know, you, you cannot deal with a topic without having some very important aspect of it connected to weights and measures. Now, because it's, we consider it more modern, but it's actually very, very ancient. It's a very important part of the um, ancient world to have standard weights and measures. You, uh, it's, you could almost say it's as important to forming a culture or a society as what language is. It binds the society together. Now even terms like ruler to measure but also ruler to rule over. It's, it's been passed on so again it's sort of it's been lost the connection but uh, in at least of a sort of recent modern period like we have for instance the Magna Carta. Now in terms of uh, democracy and the beginnings of modern democracy but one of the key points of Magna Carta was uh, that the nobles forced a standard of weights and measures so that the king could not just change them over time so you know for instance the size of land or the, uh, how much gold was to be paid in tax that uh, these weights and measures were locked into law was a very important turning point in the modern time but the further you go back you'll find it throughout the ancient world so another important Book of law, well, um, important. The Code of Hammurabi was also about standardised laws, but written into that was also about weights and measures, and you know how much tax should be paid, how much compensation should be paid, what the weight and measure of those things um, are in included. So again, it, a society, a, an empire, a civilization cannot exist without a common language and without a common system of weights and measures. Now. In around this whole topic, uh, the Book of the Dead pops up very often. So usually they refer to, you know, the, what, um, for instance, uh, as you pass through judgment, your lies would be measured against the weight of a feather. And if you, if there were too many lies, you know, you couldn't pass through. But uh, the Book of the Dead in itself has many other important aspects to it and also regarding weights and measures but also for instance the Ten Commandments and that part those parts of the Bible can be directly you know you can see the evolution of those directly through to the uh, from the Book of the Dead. Uh, this is from the Nicholson Museum here in Sydney it's um, shortly going to be changed location new building and but anyway um, so, so not just in the mystical spiritual sense and the sense of like passing through the uh, you know passing through judgment into the um, uh, the land of the dead but you know the importance so well the, the weighing of the heart against the feather was very important because about to do with the lies you told and and your honesty and and these types of points now might tend to think it's got to do with um, whole other aspects but uh, but there's also a very important recurring theme not just in the book of the dead but going through to the Bible on the importance of being honest with your weights and measures especially because it's it's a form of theft so especially in the old marketplace you know like now uh, things tend to be bottled they're clearly labeled with their weights and measures but in the market so w whether you're buying cloth or whether you're buying wheat whether you're bu whatever you're buying uh, the importance of you know it's very easy for for the seller to manipulate the the weights and to therefore to steals and but it's also uh, an important level of trust and and kings in in sort of the, the you know the last one thousand years but going back through time have been very strict um, in, about imposing these and they knew that 
uh, the faith in society, the faith in the law or in, in the marketplace was very important. Now, for instance, the Book of the Dead, Spell 125, it's basically the, the uh, books of law from the Bible, but th there are many references also in the Bible to honesty in regards to um, weights and measures. But it's an interesting read. You can find it's not hard to get the uh, Spell 125 from the Book of the Dead, and there are some interesting parts uh, into there. So again, you can see, if you sort of read through it, you can see how often it's you know the Ten Commandments, but also the large the books of law, uh, as in the Bible, um, and and other texts you'll find as well. But um, an interesting little point. So I know the name of these forty-two gods, and um, Hermes uh, Trismistic Tris Tresmegistus, sorry, I always pronounce that wrong. Well, uh, this is very important to the Corpus Hermetico, her, the Hermetic Code literally comes from Hermes, and it's interesting that there are 42 books in this, and well, the name of the 42 gods, and and so it's, again, it's one of these numbers that popped up also in architecture and weights and measures in regards to the modern world. Now, um, also as you read through. Uh, there are some interesting points in regards to uh, various laws and the, uh, what you have done and, and what you have not done. And again, this uh, importance of honesty in weights and measures. For instance, will I have not um, harmed the offering cattle, have not caused pain to anyone, um, I have not reduced the offerings in the temple, I have not harmed the loaves of the gods. Now, these are. Uh, more to do with yeah well with temple practice and and so forth but uh, interesting one um, <laughs> for it, noting just on the comedic side I suppose in the modern sense I have not penetrated the penetrator of a penetrator okay hands up um, I can honestly say I haven't done that I'll skip the next one and uh, I have not reduced the measuring vessel I have not reduced the measuring cord I have not encroached on the fields I have not added to the pan of the scales. I have not tampered with the plumb bob of the scales. Now, the plumb bob is um, not only for astronomical usage, but also it's to do with the pendulum as well, which is a, a measure of time. But you know, I have not measured with the mess with the um, measuring vessel. I have not measured. I have not reduced the measuring cord. I have not encroached on the field. So you know, the, the measuring land, and I have not you know, I have not cheated with my measures of land. And, and measuring land was very important to the ancient Egyptians. The three, four, five triangles, one of these um, uh, me methods that they used to mu uh, to measure land. I have not added to the pan of the scales. Now. Where, part of the world where I come from now uh, you don't mess with scales as well that's that can get you in a lot of trouble very quickly so the again these laws are still very you know in the head not uh, making a bit of a joke of it if you get what I'm, I'm getting at but yeah you, you you don't mess with the scales you don't mess with the rod uh, the measuring cord you know um, these are very very um, important uh, parts now also, it's uh, interesting. Sort of, I have not held back the waters in its time. I have not dammed a dam at it, at the rapids. Now, it's also interesting um, in regards to, to now. It's yeah, like not building a dam, uh, or it's still some you know obvious you know because you you steal the water from the people down down river. But just as an interesting side note, uh, it's we can measure that we have changed the speed of the earth by building dams it's that's that's a very um interesting point now i'm not going to say that's you know was uh, known to them at the time and and maybe and that their dams were as large as ours or had much of an impact but just it still is an interesting little point that we we've literally changed the speed of the earth uh, by building by building uh, so many large scale dams that it's we can you know measure that now it's, it's very slight but it is um, an interesting little point on the side. So you can see, like here, we'll spell 125, Book of the Dead, how, how many things connected to uh, the books of law in the Bible, but especially this concept of not manipulating the weights and measures. So not just in trade with your other people, but also in uh, offerings in temples and, and so forth. Now, for instance, the uh, famous incident uh, in the uh, Bible in regards to the money changes. Now they were uh, not directly, well they weren't tampering with the scales but they were abusing weights and measures and so that's also like another interesting uh, side note. So the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Spell 125 in particular, 
um, but the connections to again how it's been passed on and uh, like a common theme so you know how often for instance uh, even Sumerian the Ark of Utnapish Tim how much it connects to New Jerusalem and you can see this uh, persistence of these uh, not just stories but also very like the topic I'm most uh, interested in is weights and measures because um, they're so tangible and um, and so those who might be sceptical it's, well, it's, it's a hard argument to, for them to deny because we, we, these are things that can be measured literally which is the basis of uh, our modern secular scientific world but uh, Leviticus 19.36 so even well, there are many references, dozens and dozens of references uh, throughout the um, uh, Old Testament and New Testament as well in regards to honesty in um, in weights and measures. Uh, Leviticus was it uh, 1936, um, and also well, uh, also in Proverbs. So a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is His delight. So, uh, you know, not only has like a, well, a literal law, but also as a description, um, as a, a a way to just you know the connection between tales of morality, but also how they you know are, are described in a sense. Well, you know, being honest in your weights and your measures, at this being a fundamental of of a, of a just society as well. Uh, Proverbs 20:10 is, is just again one of many others. So, for instance, differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. So that you should be using uh, honest measures. So you don't have one f uh, for your own use, and then you basically using a sly measure on the side, or that you're separating the people according to different me that the weights and the measures used should be um, across the scale. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, Deuteronomy. 2515 again another example you must have accurate and honest weights and measures so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you well I, I, again so not just literal sense in the law but also in tales of um, morality and how you should deal with other people this is an important point so for instance in um, well on the level this is like a one of these key phrases in in um, well, masonry, for instance, even see that they're using the uh, the level and also like the plumb line to you know to you know the to be at right angles. You know that's another um, meet on the level part on the square. Again, so to be square, to be level, these are you know it's been passed. It's it's built into it our language so these things that are very much connected to construction masonry but you know also weights and measures and measuring tools and, and how they are honest devices and if you live honestly you know you're very you know, quite literally in a moral sense and in the literal uh, sense of measure you know to be this is a square house again just another one of these terms so um, on the level square these are all d directly come from from masonry as in the construction but also, um, as uh, the, as you progress through uh, masonry, it's about uh, morality as well, and about how to you know be a better man and live a moral life. And well, again, like he sort of you know love on the square. So also, you'll find this um, uh, concept in the in the ta about how you should be you know honest with your family and with your friends and um, and uh, concepts you know such as, well you know honest monogamy and stuff. These are also important uh, moral lessons which go through uh, these organizations now uh, Masonic tracing board now uh, you know what it's got to be one third to, to more of these are uh, measuring tools is all over the place you know the square the plumb line um, scales it's you know there's no sh no shortage of it there so this is also you know as you can see it's been passed on through and it's built into ancient and uh, uh, biblical up into the modern day so at the beginning I mentioned the importance of trade and standardized weights and measures but uh, you grab anything uh, and you'll see that it's it's in, by law again law and weights and measures the ruler and rules these are all connected and you, well you grab anything and you by law it has uh, stamped with its weights and measures on there it's one of it's a fundamental of our uh, society uh, things like time length weight the 360 degree compass uh, pressure uh, temperature these are all weights and measures and again they you know they it's important that we have 
standard versions of it. So even when you see the, the temperature on, on the weather forecast or the atmospheric pressure, these are, are all weights and measures and that they're standardised is key. It's fundamental to our society. But it's uh, so often it's considered to be relatively modern, but it's very important going back to ancient times. Now, for instance, Zeus holds the orb and the rod. The orb represents weight and the rod represents length. So again, weights and measures and this concept of, of uh, royalty and that it's uh, important uh, symbol, you know, like a, or, well, also a divine symbol. Now, that same ancient Greek symbol you'll find, fr again, throughout, you know, it's been transferred it through uh, until this very day, but in the Christian world. So uh, older artworks, again, the, the orb and the rod. To measure and to wave, it's it's these are uh, hidden in plain sight, but the symbolism, the importance of it, has been generally lost over over time. Uh, well, it's like again the the Western um, Church, the Eastern Church. It's it's literally everywhere. It's been passed on, you know, f through the ages, through cultures, and uh, again, you cannot have a civilization. You cannot. Uh, have an empire, you cannot have a nation unless there is st in standardized law laws by which people can live under and know their place and know what they can and cannot do, but also standard weights and measures regulating an honest and f and that people can have faith in the marketplace and that one of the prime jobs of a of a uh, of a queen or a king was to regulate and to protect the the weights and measures from coins to uh, grain to alcohol to you know, any, any measure. Now, um, again, to be stays as a key symbol in uh, any monarchy is the, the scepter and the orb, or the ruler and the weight. This, this, that's literally, you know, that's where it comes, and it's come down uh, through thousands of years. And you also see the, the same symbolism in these very important cities, such as Sydney and Winnipeg, which uh, well is you know a overloaded with Masonic architecture, this uh, occult symbolism, ancient knowledge, ancient symbols that have been passed on through weights and measures, especially in, in the um, architecture. Even the, the concept of law, this is a, you know, that a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a stable, just society, uh, the, and these, this, uh, these phrases as well, so the rule of law and the scales of justice, you know, that's again, it's, you know, you know, to, to weigh and to measure, even like, you know, the, the judge measures the evidence, you know, weighs the evidence, measures, you know, the arguments, the, the, the phrase is, it's, it's again, because it, it's so common and because it's so, uh, you know, in our face, we've, it's so easy to dismiss, but if you follow the trail back, it's quite important. Now, even in uh, the constellations, are 12, you know, which again are measured, the pr procession is another system of measurement and encoded knowledge, but even so, for instance, Aquarius, the, the water bearer, but he holds an amphora. The amphora were used to set, you know, so it would be a sacred amphora, it would be filled with water, and that would be, you know, how to, how you would standardise liquid and uh, dry measures, so grain and foodstuffs. He also holds the ruler, which was a sacred ruler, to measure flooding, buildings and roads. Libra, another one of the um, constellations uh, of, you know, of the zodiac, it, well, it's literally a, a set of scales to, you know, again, to weigh, to measure, uh, things, but this is not the um, only important one. So, for instance, also if we consider Virgo, now there are many other researchers who have pointed out how important Virgo and Leo are in reference to one another and in, into uh, town plans, but also to uh, legends and symbols. So, you know, Virgo and Leo are, you know, consecrated with one another, as m many um, writers have pointed out. And for instance, in the Federal Triangle in Washington. I'll do a video on it eventually in regards to the astronomical symbols in the town plan of Canberra here in Australia, also in Astana. Uh, they have the same methods, but uh, Virgo is also a very important connection because she holds the rod in one hand and the sheaf of wheat in the other. Grains are used to define weights and the rod is used to define measures of length. So once more we have you know, hidden in plain sight 
weights and measures and the importance of these particular. But there's also another interesting connection in regards to that is that you, you, where Virgo is, the sheaf of wheat is literally above the scales of Libra. So we have, you know, we use grains to, def you know, still like when we talk about our ounces, for instance, the troy ounce, which is used to define gold and silver, etc., 480 grains. Grains are also used to define the inch, so the uh, free barley corn per inch. So uh, cross references there, but drawing to an end now, you could, again, these you could go on for quite some time in regards to this, but it's you now written in the law. It's in in our uh, in our language, in in our um, yeah. It, it, well, it, it's everywhere, and it's also uh, in a more tangible practical sense it's the basis of our society from gps time measuring roads measuring anything weights and measures are very important and uh, with that hope you enjoyed and have a good one